Today, Precarious plays Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Are you ready to go? That that sounds like an engine starting to me. Yeah, let's start with this. The morph ball doesn't really have an iconic sound, does it? Uh, if it does, it's some. It's one that man- managed to escape my notice so far. I feel. Life. I feel like. Oh, you know what I can probably do. Actually, I think about the crackle uh, sound that the morph ball bomb makes. That's the. You, I can't make that noise because it's it's electric boogie oogie oogie. You know what I think has a more iconic sound in my mind? What? The spider ball, which has a nice sort of pleasant like. Type noise mm-hmm. in some of the games. Mm-hmm. There's something that I wanted to talk about. Something that I wanted to do. Oh yeah, More I wanted than... to. I wanted to call it. I wanted to call my shot. Today's the day. We're gonna beat Metroid Prime you... too. Really? Yep. We're gonna do it. Oh no. No, there's no way. Oh okay. <laughs> I. You you know your audience here does not know that. <laughs> Oi. Although you know what's funny. None of this. Uh, I wh- don't think it makes the noise that I'm thinking of in this game. I don't think it goes. It sounds like like a metal object rolling over rocks, right? Can you turn it up? You have the controller there. Can you turn it up for a minute? We'll just find out. No, there it is. That's the noise. Yeah, it does make the noise. Yeah. Okay. Whoop, wait a second. I think I was just, yeah, I was just made a mistake. <laughs> uh, the whole reason why I came over here was not to go that way. Because I could not figure out a clear way to go that direction. This is what I wanted. Mm. Let's see if it's anything good. Oh. It's a, it is the pit of despair. That's... Hmm. This is very like. If there were only one portal in the game, mm-hmm. I would expect it to be this one. <laughs> it it is very theatrical. Yeah. This is like the portal room. Dynamo. Dynamo storage. Dynamo storage. Oh, they stole all the dynamos and put them in the dark dimension. Um, what's what's a dynamo? A dynamo. Do yeah, a, a dynamo is uh. I'm trying to speak about it more specifically instead of just in general. In general, it is related to a mechanism that is related to the production of energy. Oh. But I'm not sure if it is something more specific than that. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's not actually... Based on context clues, I definitely know it's related to the production and or storage of energy, but I'm actually not sure which. So, like, I don't know... Well, like, uh, I think a capacitor temporarily stores energy, for example. I think a dynamo is like the actual generating unit, you know? Hmm. Why are those... Never mind. Whoa. Oh, wow. I am very much impressed. Oh... oh. Nah, uh, that's a shame. <laughs> um, there was an idea that I had. Oh yeah, I thought of something between sessions. Yeah. You know how there were a couple of points where I was worried that this game was going to uh, m- straight murder me. Yeah. I wonder if because this is like the the Wii collector's edition, like the. Uh, the Metroid Prime Trilogy. Mm. I wonder if they massaged the difficulty a little bit. Oh, that would be dirty. Did you look it up to see if they did? I didn't. You don't want to know, do you? 
No, because it doesn't really matter because I still think that this is the version that I would prefer any- Oh. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Can I scan that or? Yes, okay. What is it? It is a flying, uh, ing flying cache. It bears, uh, I think one of the, one of the keys. Yeah, but I think that this is one of the ultimate keys. Yeah, it's for the Sky Temple. Mm -hmm. So you need three keys for each of the Dark Temples, right? Mm -hmm. But then the ultimate area, the final area of the game, is guarded by nine keys, and I think there are three in each area. But they're hidden. You need to go back with late game equipment to find them all. Now, can I... You know what I could probably do? Let's try it. <laughs> I forgot. This is great. I love this. Love it. Yeah, honestly, anytime I use the screw attack, except when I absolutely have to, it's going to be a bit of a gamble. It's just sort of a flex. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, No, you flex. You are Samus. It's you really, flex. It's, it's really inconsistent. It's really easy to get caught up on the environment and then you automatically backflip off of it, usually into a cliff. Or uh, into a, uh, no, the other part of a, the, the bottom of a cliff. <laughs> What's that called? A hole. A chasm. Yeah, yeah. the other C word. Uh, ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we can be in our merry way. I don't think I have anything fun or good to talk about. I have been chipping away at the Mountain Blade 2 Banner Lord main campaign. Mm, that and still hasn't been a happy thing for you, has it? No, no. And the reason why I'm doing it is so that way I can definitely say... No, it does not get any better. Do not, do not do it. Not finished, not good. Extract value from the modding scene and from the core gameplay loop in the sandbox mode, but do not engage with the main campaign because it's, it's wasn't not there, good. Wasn't there at least a little bit of time where you were like, this is what I've been waiting to play this whole time? Didn't it open up for a second? I remember having part of a conversation where you were actually happy to be playing the game. When... Was there a time? There was a brief window. Yes, okay, so let me let me catalog the, the, the tale here. I wonder, I think that that had an energy barrier over it. But you know what? Okay, if I go through the portal here, and then I go through the portal there. Yeah, I'll go ahead and try that. Because I, I, I might have just missed something with like the dark visor, and I'm pretty close. Okay. So I'll go check. Um, there was a brief window of time where I successfully transitioned from essentially like mercenary tier to proper lordship landowner tier mm -hmm. and for a time i was like yeah i did it i stuck the landing i hold on just a second no because that that no i, I messed up um I stuck the landing and I was gaining territory and I was, I was recruiting other clans to my cause and I had established a kingdom with laws that I liked and were good, you know? Mm hmm But then that just started to drag and now I'm unhappy again because... Of, of several different 
decisions that they made. Basically, they just don't, the developers don't equip you for success. They don't give you tools to manage things at that scale. So here are, here's a, a really simple example, right? Your fifes and the fifes that belong to your vassals, they require food. Mm -hmm. And all of the food that you have is lumped into a single value per settlement. Oh, I can, I didn't realize that I hadn't gone through over here. Okay, give me just a second. Uh, do you remember how video games work? Mm, mm. Yep. They work well, yes. That's uh, a video game. Yes. Oh. I was trying to be <laughs> clever. I was trying to Yeah. be a clever clog. I, I saw. Draw I'm that sorry. stuff sorry. That was... I thought I could escape. That was a real bummer, man. It's fine. Uh, the point is that... You can contribute to the marketplace stocks for a settlement by like dumping grain and meat and olives or whatever into the, the marketplace, right? And that contributes to that settlement's food value. Yeah. But then there's no way, there's no convenient way, which is a bigger problem than there not being any way at all. Oh, it just leads here. That's funny. I guess it just, I guess this must be a cheat and it doesn't actually match up in any physical way. Or and they, maybe they just didn't want the maps to be that close together. Yeah, because there might be, it would be pretty hard to see what was down here if it was directly connected to this. Uh, anyway, um, there's nothing to stop caravans from coming and immediately buying everything again. Because where you're like, ah, finally, this town has a surplus, and is they're now uh, accumulating food that they might need if they get besieged, mm -hmm. now that that value is going up, caravans look at that and go, low prices due to a surplus. Fantastic. So it actually, the thing that you do to make your fiefs more resilient and the, the fiefs of your allies more resilient to besiege, uh, besiegement, to being, to being besieged, that actually attracts <laughs> Caravans that are looking for a deal. Mm. They are one and the same. And, and you can't like set a stockpile or anything? No, no, you can't. Like there is a natural stockpile that comes from uh, like the town's internal production, which I, I don't think it's like a specific food. It's just a, a generic like food score. Yeah. And you can't affect that in any way? Uh, you can you can make buildings. You can upgrade a single building per settlement. It's like a, an internal orchard that increases that base value, but it is never enough to cover a fully stocked garrison. Mm. Uh, so... Yeah, and what it's it's kind of I feel a little vindicated because you immediately like spotted the solution and we're like, can't you just do X? And it's like you should totally be able to do X. No, <laughs> Wouldn't you that can't. That'd be nice. I mean, like you know, you're a lord. You can make all the lordy lordy some rules that you want, right? Except for you can't. Ow. Oh, oh! He's got a roof. Oh, what? Well, could you vibrate through it? Will your goggles <laughs> help? I don't. This I, is wrong. I I came over. I, like I wanted to use my my goggles. I wanted to use all of my goggles to see if I missed something. But then I thought, like, oh, maybe it's just as simple as recognizing that there isn't a, a roof on that. That that hurt my feelings. 